Hi, this is Mike and welcome to another short support video presented by Microfocus Customer Care. I'm on the Identity Management team and I'm going to present another how-to video. Now Microfocus recommends securing the communication between two eDirectory drivers. The drivers use digital certificates for the SSL connection. For this secure communication to work, we need to issue certificates from a certificate authority from one of the eDirectory trees. There are two SSL types of secure communication that we can set up on our eDirectory to eDirectory drivers. You can see that I have an eDirectory driver set up here. And quickly I'm going to show you those two settings. You can either choose the KMO method or the Java Keystore method. The most common method to use is the KMO method. Typically, if we're going to use the KMO method, we would use the eDirectory to eDirectory certificate wizard, which can be found on this main screen right here. Normally, this wizard works quite well. However, for a myriad of reasons, sometimes this wizard will not create the certificates properly. This video will show you how to manually set up the KMO certificates and establish secure communication between two eDirectory drivers using server certificates just like the eDirectory to eDirectory certificate wizard would. So let's get started. I have two Linux servers here. One is a SLES 12.2, which is my main vault tree, and the other is a Red Hat 7.2 server. Both servers have eDirectory installed. Both have Identity Manager 4.6, and both have an eDirectory driver installed, which is fully functional. Now, since both eDirectory trees have a certificate authority, it doesn't matter which tree I use as my source tree. So I'm just going to use this tree right here, my main vault tree, as my certificate authority. I want to use iManager always on this one server because there are certificates that will be saved and I need them all here in one place. Okay, step one. I want to create a normal server certificate. So you do that through roles and tasks and you go down to NetIQ certificate server and you choose create server certificate. You browse for your server you're going to give it a nickname. I'm going to be kind of descriptive here. So this is my main vault cert. Now you can go ahead and choose standard, but I'm going to choose custom because I want to make some specific changes. Click next. I'm going to keep organizational certificate authority. I want to make sure that the SSL are selected. I want to make sure that the server is selected under the, exten under the extended key type. Click next. Now, SHA-1 is not considered secure anymore, so we're going to go ahead and choose 256. And I'm going to scroll down. And I'm also going to change this validity period. I want a good 10 years for my certificate, so I'm going to change that. You can make this change whatever you want. Click Next. I'm going to keep my organization certificate here selected. Next. Here's all the information for my certificate. There's the name I gave it. Click Finish. Now I want to just show you what that did. I'm going to View Objects, go to where my server is, and notice it created a KMO object, a key material object, here with my server. Now, step two is I want to log into the other tree. I want to log into the remote the Red Hat tree. So I'm going to exit and log in here. And now I'm on my Red Hat tree. And I'm going to basically do the same thing. Go to Roles and Tasks, Certificate Server, Create Server Certificate. I want to browse for my server. Again, give it a name. I'm 
I'm going to choose custom again. This time I'm going to choose external certificate authority. Click next. I'm going to keep this the same as the other key, the other key material object. Change my security. Here's my cert name. Click finish. And now I'm going to save this certificate as well. Put it on my desktop. And I'm going to give this a descriptive name. So this is my red hat. How about this? My red hat cert, CSR. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. And as you can see, it's been saved over here. Okay, step three. We need to exit I'm manager. We need to exit the Red Hat server. We want to log into the first tree. Now you see I'm on my main vault tree. And I want to go to my roles and tasks. I want to go back down to our certificate server. And instead of choosing create server, create server certificate, I'm going to choose issue certificate. And I'm going to browse for, on my desktop, my CSR file. I want to go ahead and make these settings exactly as we've done before. So we're going to change this to SSL or TLS, the key type and then change the extended key type to server and click next. I'm going to keep everything default here. I'm going to go ahead and change this to our maximum. And I want to save this in base 64 format. I'm going to save this to my desktop again. I'm going to be descriptive here, and we'll call this main vault issued cert. And as you can see, it's on my desktop now. Okay, let's move on to step four. Step four, we want to stay on our vault tree. We want to view objects. And this time we're going to go to our security container and click on our CA. We want to click on the certificates tab on the certificate authority. And we want to check our self-signed certificate. And then click export. We're going to uncheck the private key, save this in base64 format. Next, and we want to save this exported certificate. Again, I want to be descriptive. So this is going to be my MVCASS cert. I'm going to save it to my desktop and click OK. And now you will see that we have the certificate on the desktop from our CA. Now, Step five, we want to exit out of our main vault and we want to log into our other tree. Now we're on the red hat tree here and we want to view objects and we want to browse to where our KMO object is, the one we created. And we want to click on that object. Let's expand this. And we want to click on Certificates, make sure Trusted Root Certificate is selected, and then there's an Import link right next to it, the, the certificate we have here. There's an Import link. Click on Import, and this is important. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to import the self-signed certificate first. Now. Before you do anything else here, you don't want to click Next. You don't want to click anything here. 
except for new. And now we want to import the issued certificate. Now we have two certificates here that we're going to import. Click Next, Finish, and OK. OK, now at this point, we can go ahead and configure our eDirectory drivers for the KMO method. We're already on the Red Hat tree, so I'm going to configure this side. We edit the properties of our driver, expand this. We're set on KMO, and so all we need to do is add our KMO line on here, our KMO object. RH cert. And since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and start this driver. Now I'm going to exit out, go to the other server, the original, the first server. I'm going to configure the driver on the vault. Give it our key KMO name. Click OK here. And we're going to start this driver. Now, they've, the two drivers have already created a secure communication, secure socket. Best way to see this is first we're going to make a change to an object. I have a couple of users in here. I'm going to make a change to the description. Let's just add test. Now that should have synchronized over to the other server. And we can verify that. And there it is. It created the description over on the other server. Now, let's go ahead and look in Trace. I've created a Trace file in here. And I'm just going to search for JSSE. And you can see that it created a KMO factory server socket. And then, then it shows some detailed information here uh, using the server certificate. Uh, gives us our name. We're given the issuer, uh, some fingerprint information, and uh, the validity period. It also shows there's our two SHA-256 that we're using. And it's created an open connection. And it's done the handshake and it's waiting to receive and so we are at a secure driver at this point using the KMO method that we manually set up. I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching.